Welcome to the Prada Museum in Madrid, Spain, in our weekly Wednesday series of conversations in English with American Friends of the Prada Museum. We are a nonprofit organization that supports the museum and many projects, uh, along with our sister organization in Spain, the Fundación Amigos del Museo del Prado. And I'm very happy to be here today in front of this wonderful composition by Velázquez, not only because it's a manifestation of his personality, his artistic skill, his genius, but also from American friends of the Prada Museum and with the help and a generous grant of the American Express Foundation, one of our recent projects was to help fund, provide the funding for this ingenious frame made here at the Prado to resolve the specific needs of the spinners by Velazquez. And what had happened was that this is the Velazquez original composition, which was added on to in later years, which changed the composition and distracted us from uh, how Velazquez made the painting. So thanks to this frame, we can now connect really back to the composition as Velazquez made it. So let's, let's look at it. We have two clearly differentiated scenes and the painting is just incredible. It's, it's loose, it vibrates, there's absolutely no lines or drawing. It's all created with color, with blotches of color, his painterly technique that makes the forms, the spaces, it makes everything. So we have two scenes, one in the foreground with a scene of 17th century tapestry workshop and another scene clearly differentiated with a different ambiance in the background which at least has a tapestry. So let's look at the foreground composition. We have five women set out in a circle. It opens up on the left with a pair of two. One lady opens, draws back a curtain to show us the scene and she seems to be the helper or companion with the woman that's at the spinning wheel who's preparing wool into thread for the next step of weaving. And the spinning wheel is in movement. This makes us stop and think, how do you make movement within a painting? <laughs> and you do this with incredibly loose, uh, liquid brush strokes. Uh, Velasquez is showing his genius of how it's in movement. And she's in parallel with another pair of figures on the right-hand side of the composition, which are in the next step of preparing thread for weaving. Uh, in movement, if we see this beautiful figure here with her hand and arm, her hands, we can't focus on her fingers. Her fingers are in movement. She's spinning, she's active. And both of these are in contrapostos. This is also interesting of Velasquez's temperament, his personality, how he sees things, that these two beautiful figures in the, in the foreground are in classical sculptural pose of contrapposto. Their bodies are twisted and in their parallel. Here we have from the back, looking this way with a twist in her body, the contrapposto, and the leg backwards facing away from us, compared to her companion figure facing forward with a twist to her body and her leg forward. And both of these compositions bring us into the painting, into this V, and they're with their 17th century tapestry workshop with balls of yarn on the, on the ground, the, the everyday instruments of a 17th century spinning uh, activity. And then they take us into a next plane of this figure that's very much in the shadow. And so Velasquez knows that our eye does not focus on what is not in light. And so she's very blurry and in the shadow. And then behind her, we come into the next scene and there's a, another series of five ladies set out also in two and two and one in the middle. So it's a parallel with the front, with the foreground. And one, they're dressed much more sophisticatedly and one looks out at us, the viewer. And so she's pulling us into the back, back, uh, background of the composition, looking out at us. And look at the, her companion with the blue dress. 
and the this very liquid red shawl. I mean, look, this this brush strokes are just amazing. And here to the, we have this pair, and then to the left, in the background, we have this fabulous yellow dress and lighting on this figure with in yellow. And she's standing next to a chair and a viola. So there's presence of music also in the background. And these the ladies seem to be expectant as to what is happening between the last two figures. One is wearing a helmet with her arm up, and one is looking at the lady it, it, with the helmet with her arm down. So the arms are also in parallel. And behind them, we know there is a tapestry because we see the border of the tapestry at the top, and we see the two figures of Cupid. And if we look further, we see more of a composition of what's behind them. And the, this tapestry gives us the key to the meaning, to the, helps us unlock what the painting is about because that, along with a reference from our inventory in the 1600s, we believe that this is, was considered the fable of Arachne. And considered the fable of Arachne because it's a Greek mythological story between Pallas, the goddess of the arts, among other things, and Arachne, who was a mere mortal, but who was a great spinner. They go into competition with each, with each other as to who is the best weaver. And from this story, the mythological story, we know that Pallas uh, turns Arachne into a spider because her pride is hurt, but also because Arachne made a tapestry about the love affairs of her father, Zeus. And so the tapestry is the story of the abduction of, of Europe, but it's not just any tapestry. It's the tapestry of the painting by Titian of the abduction of Europe, painted for the King of Spain that was in the, royal, the Spanish royal collection here. And ideas of these competition between mortals and gods could be about challenge of authority, but it also could be that the arts are never fully perfected and they can continually progress. And Velazquez is making a clear reference to Titian, whose painting, if we see here next, this is the wonderful thing about the Prado is that there's so much here. You can see this is the composition of Rubens who interpreted the composition of Titian and both the Titian and the Rubens with the same subject matter of the abduction of Europe were in the Spanish royal collection and Velazquez, who is younger than Rubens, saw that Rubens copied Titian, saw how important it was and he adds himself with this concealed, hidden reference to this painting, which is the image of the tapestry at the back of the, the, the spinners. He includes himself in the idea of art and progression, one master to another to another. And he's declaring to us that he is part of the chain, a link in the chain between the masters like Titian, like Rubens, who are using the great technique of color and loose brushstrokes to create these amazing compositions. So loose, so real. And at the same time, Velasquez, his personality, he's so discreet. Like, we have to kind of remember that these figures here, which could be the 17th century palace in Arachne, with the story of palace in Arachne uh, in, in the background, and also the story of the abduction of Zeus, all of these stories within the stories are, is a very Baroque idea. It's also Velasquez's personality to put uh, a paradoxical narration in the composition, but he's also incredibly discreet, making this an everyday scene, but with the power of Titian and Rubens and classical Greek sculpture. It's just amazing. So we hope you enjoyed our visit, our visit today. And we're American friends of the Prada Museum. We support the museum. We'd love for you to see what we do on our website to join us in our efforts to support this museum. Or if you're in Spain and prefer to speak Spanish, Join the Fundación Amigos del Museo del Prado is a way that we can help the museum. So thank you very much, and, and we hope to see you next Wednesday.